out. Oh, and there it goes. That's quite the delay we had on stream, apparently. But yeah, all right, let's go. Here we are. Oh, well, it's so, um, time. This is where it all starts. We're about to get the weapon, the first weapon of the game, and Fred got the dagger. Today we got the torch. Dagger is Optima, which it's basically the item you want to get, but torch is not that bad. In, in, in um, fact, torch is a little bit faster just for stage one. The problem yeah. with the torch is that you need to go find it again in stage two. Yeah. If you don't, that might be a problem. Exactly. Uh, the, the weapon farming is a bit of an issue sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, to Leo, dude. What? That was really close, dude. Holy hell, dude. That was really ballsy, I feel like. Um. So, so yeah. One, so, it's so the one trick they're going to do here is they're going to skip one of these waterfall cycles. So, like, you'll notice that you want to stand on these stone platforms for the waterfall cycles, but for the last couple, they just stand on this flat platform, they skip ahead. Yeah, and you want to jump as uh, quickly as possible through the waterfall, basically, um, without getting hit by it. So if you do it too quickly, you will, you'll actually get eaten up by the waterfall. Shoutouts to Aquas, by the way, as he is in chat right now, <laughs> for the waterfall. Eh. Whether whether you're gonna enjoy it or not, that's uh, for you to decide. To be honest. <laughs> so now we're yeah. gonna on the boss here. It's, you Mashing can just like stand right under his head. Ooh. Like oh, like it looks me. like you'll it looks like you're gonna get hit when you stand there, but like you can just yeah. go right under the head and mash and do a ton of damage that way. Both of them did that fight really really well. Well, same Aquas. We all enjoy that. So. That's why we're here. So uh, today I was going to open this chest and see if it's going to be a dagger. And it's probably not going to be. Oh, Ooh, there it it's is. a dagger. It's a dagger. Never mind. So all Sometimes well. lucky, boys. <laughs> well, well, that's pretty cool. So both so of them got the dagger now, which is uh, really good. So the next and thing they're going to do they're here is a damage boost here. Yeah, and in fact, uh, they're almost on par again. That's really cool. Yeah, the beak is an illusion in this game. Like, uh, you can get pretty far into, like, the the hitbox of the bird. You can over overlap with it pretty far in, and it's always good. All right, cool. That that's really cool. That's uh, really cool that both of them got the dagger. Recently, we discovered a new tech that allows us to like uh, consistently farm a dagger if we have the scythe at the start of stage two. So that would have been a nice backup option as well. What would have been pretty bad would have been to grab um, something like a bow, for example. Yeah, the bow's not particularly great for this section. Like, if you have the upgraded bow and you do the damage boosts, like... Yeah. In, in this section, you want to be able to do damage things that are, like, far across the screen. Not necessarily things that you're right next to, so... The bow is the worst weapon here. 500, dude. All right. Yeah. So uh, we damage boosted early on the stage to uh, save some time jumping up onto like the next platform on the ship. And um, what this does is that we're now on gray armor, obviously, but we want to get gold armor uh, at all times in this run. So what they're gonna do is at the end of this auto scroll, they're gonna perform a trick where they're basically opening chests in reverse order to. Uh, be able to spawn another gold armor, which would otherwise not be possible usually. And the great thing about this is, is that this is an auto scroller, so that means they're not losing time while they're doing so, because uh, backtracking doesn't really matter. And, and the reason they have to open the chests in reverse order is because of the way chests work in this game. You, uh, the, what you get in the chest is determined entirely by what armor you have and what order you spawn the chests in. So you get your uh, bronze armor out of chest 6 if you have steel armor, and then you get um, gold armor out of chest 5 if you have bronze armor. So yeah. it's coming up right here, you, you have a small window of opportunity to do it. So and this is where you spawn the first on one, own. and this is the second one, and you open it, and now you open the other one that you spawned before, and that's going to be a gold armor. And easy game, both of them got it, really nice, real, 
really, really nice. So that means both of these players can go for the quick kill on this boss, which is really not that hard at all. Um, and it's gonna like two shot the boss with like two dragons, and it's gonna be really, really fast. Very cool. So one of, one of the things they're going to do during this quick kill is they're going to be shooting some daggers and charging magic at the same time. Um, I expect. And the way you can do that uh, has to do with the fact that you have two attack buttons. If you keep one depressed at all times, you charge magic. So you like press one before you release the next and just keep alternating between them. Uh, they'll charge magic and fire daggers at the same time. Yeah. Basically, there is some uh, sort of glitch with it though that you can get stuck in place if you do it sometimes, um, which can like wreck you on some bosses. But on this one, it's not not really a big deal. You're basically just standing still. It is really close. This is really close so far, and uh, this is uh, kind of interesting because uh, in Super Goals and Ghosts anything can lose like fucking minutes like that's insane like if you get hit or whatever you just uh lose a couple minutes sometimes sometimes it's even faster to just uh well if you die you lose a couple minutes yeah but like most of the time like a lot of the times it's easier to just um intentionally kill yourself so you can get the armor back and stuff like that so um that's why mostly it loses so much time when you get hit and stuff so it, it looks like we're Beginning to see some separation in this um, lava section. So this lava section, you can do like at various levels of safety versus quickness. And um, the, these imps, like the optimal route involves ignoring them. However, if you um, ignore them, then they can hit you, and that yeah. can give you a lot of time. So there's a lot of risk reward for this area. This is scary. Yeah, this is really scary if you want to do this completely optimally like um so neither of them got it... hit but fred pulled ahead a decent amount Ooh, fred does the empty jump nice nice well he does it in a double in a quick double jump but that was really good Tadeo also gets it man this is really 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 close i really like this um so what ooh. they're going to do is they're going to store a boosted shot i'll explain that later and they're going to take advantage of that to try and kill this armor oh the talio doesn't quite get it um not a huge problem for Kaleo. He can get a backup bronze armor by the end of this and lose a minimal amount of time. And none of them really kill the armor. Uh, they're just going to try to kite it for a little bit until uh, it despawns on the third tower. So I suppose I should explain the way storage works. Um, so with... Uh, weapons, you have a maximum a number of weapons you can have on the screen. And, um... If, if you, uh... <laughs> another, and if you try to shoot another weapon, like, he moves his arm but nothing comes out. And another That's... thing that combines with the fact that if you double jump and shoot, you shoot a more powerful weapon. So if you jump once, you throw your three daggers, you jump again, and you try to shoot that last one. It'll trick the game into thinking your next weapon is going to be a boosted attack, so you can get that boosted attack anytime. Yeah, because like each weapon has a certain limit of uh, how many how many projectiles can be of that same weapon on screen at the same time. And if you like reach the maximum and you keep spamming the shoot button, you can actually see Arthur uh, be stuck in the shooting animation for for quite a bit. I mean, for like that duration and you will see no projector come out instead. But the game will still think you, you did a boosted double jump shot. Um, and so instead of throwing it out, it will be stored on Arthur, and the next time you're gonna shoot, it's gonna be a extra damage hit. Oh, that was a really good backup fight though. Like, that was really good. Yeah. I see them. Telly is not too terribly far behind. Still has a respectable time. Yeah, he definitely learned his backups. Like, that's that was really good. I like that. All right, this no. stage can be a mess sometimes. There is these blue demons called the Eaglers, and uh, yeah, they can be they can be a mess. Like, I, they I, can I, wreck I, your day. I think I think they're called Axe Ghosts. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, the well, eaglers call them something, eaglers, something some of us call them in the community. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They don't really they, they they don't really get named in the in the credits or anything. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, oh, yeah, Te Telio's got some uh having some trouble over there, but he gets through going it. Going to have to improv nice. improvise a little bit. So that that flower he left behind is going to stick around, I believe. Yeah. Yep, see there it is. All right. He can now Putting... spawn the golden armor. No, I, I don't think he's going to do that. Um, the only reason you want the golden armor at this point is for extra safety. Oh yeah, right. And who needs safety when you can go fast? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with uh, Jesse on this one. Um, they're jerks. These ghosts, these demons with the, uh, these flying demons with the axes and stuff, they have made several people cry, I believe. Like, they are a pain in the butt to deal yeah. with. Yeah, the, the, like, the problem with the axe, yeah, uh, the genies in level 4, or whatever you call them, we, we have a lot of names, they're not <laughs> named yeah. in the credit. Um, is, is that there are a few that you can't avoid. Like, some random patterns, like, particularly the one at the end, there's one that'll come up through the bottom of the platform at the very end. That That's really difficult. Oh yeah, the jerk eagle, yeah. Been there, done that. Cried and in fetal position afterwards. Then there are some very difficult ones that come, like, under the spinning platforms as you're trying to go out. And the worst part is, like, once, you, once it's in motion, you know you're going to get hit and you can't do anything about it. So I'm guessing Fred is probably gonna go for the do the Hanage storage here, or is he not? Okay, nope. he didn't even spawn. Oh yeah, he didn't even spawn Bad Luck Flower. So that's this the one bottom flower there is called Bad Luck Flower because sometimes you can spawn it early and um, well you can wreck your own day with it because um, when you try to bridge that gap um, with a double jump, he can just shoot right at you and uh, you're not gonna have a fun time in this stage then. You're gonna lose your armor, armor guaranteed. Ooh, okay, so these vines you can jump through as they're um, still building up. Um, yeah, they're they only need one hit of the upgrade. Uh... Ooh. Oh. Nice double jump, Fred. What are you doing? <laughs> so what he's probably going to do is he's probably going to try to get past this red armor and then take a death. Yeah, he's gonna run down the bridge as soon as it disappears. Because that's pretty much the fastest way to deal with this. Yep. And, and, and that, uh, that gets the steel armor back, and it despawns the armor, and it sets the chests up so we can get gold armor by the end of this level. And there's all kinds of good stuff for him. Yeah. He still had... It was not really a big loss, but it was a minor, minor loss. Nice. Fred's get over this uh, without having to kill the Wu, which is really, really cool. So, so what he's going to do here is he's going to jump over these avalanches. So, um... The intended strat for these avalanches is to climb on the ladders so that they don't um, push you back. However, some well-timed jumps and you just get over them. They don't push you back unless you're on the ground. Yeah. Some of them, like the last one, which you sometimes um, despawn, you can also make in a single jump. Like, just one jump, land on the floor in between it. Ooh, misses a dragon. And then you can jump over it. Yeah, it's gonna. It's really tight, but it's really not. The second. Nice catch. All Kelly's right. gonna close the gap if if he has a slightly better fight. Oh, that's Ooh, a nice catch. Ooh, and this is looking good. That's fancy. Yeah. So one thing Fred's going to do here. Oh, he he um, bailed out. But um, one thing you can do with that armor there is you can manipulate him to, like, kind of go up here so he can kill both of those with the same dragon magic here. Talio's gonna do it. And, well, he gets past it, and... Double yep, they're both dead. Let's go, dude. And, and that saves a little bit of time because it takes time to kind of just stand there and use your magic. Yeah, that's awesome. So now he's gonna do a quick kill on this boss. 
so you just kind of stand under there while he doesn't have hit frames yet, and you shoot one magic, and then you shoot another, and he's down. It's actually easier than it looks. Yeah, this is really easy. Once you uh, crouch okay, before this boss, once you, once you crouch in front of him, he'll stop moving completely. Uh, it only works for Astaroth, and it's really helpful on this quick go. It, it works with Nebiroth too. It's, it, the, the, the problem is that Nebiroth it's might just, hit you if you just crouch there. Yeah, it's a bit weird on him, but yeah. I've been I've been using it on Nebiroth before, but I stopped using it now because it's kind of... Oh, Ooh. Talios gets the bird. Dude. Talios gonna go for the magic kill on this armor too, so... Not sure if like, Talios is watching the stream or not, but he sure goes for some strats to catch up now. But but if, if you want to go really fast, another thing you could do is you could try to kill that armor with dagger. That's particularly difficult, and um, it only saves a little bit of time. So one thing to mention is also these birds. They are, they are certainly pretty weird because when they stick out their neck and uh, you kill them, their neck is still active for a couple of frames. So um, that one also took some lives before when you tried yeah. jumping through him already as it died. And you can already jump through the head but not through the rest of the neck. And you kind of get like wrecked by them. So they're both on an amazing pace right now. Um, oh yeah. Like, Fred is on like pretty much a flawless pace, and Talio is on a very good one. None of these players lost the shield, uh, which is going to cause some extra lag in stage one now. But, yeah. Um, that's not too big of a deal, I guess. The shield adds one more sprite to the screen, and causes extra lag. Typically we like to dish the shield as early as uh, is convenient in order yeah. to avoid that lag. And you'll it's see it coming, a, it'll be noticeable. A really good way to lose the shield on this fight particularly is to use the magic while you get shot at with flames and then you're like invulnerable and inside of the flames but you will still lose the shield. And that's usually like a really good nice way to lose it. But you can't really predict it or like go for it consistently. It's just it's a good thing if it happens, it's whatever if it doesn't, you know? You don't want to force it. And here's Fred starting uh, stage one of loop two. Now this, this stage is infamous because stage one of loop one is actually difficult enough um, for the speed run. Yeah. But like you can just reset there and you don't feel too bad about it. Oh, Fred, Fred ditches his shield uh, on the flower fireball. Good stuff, good stuff, yeah. However, this is actually one of the harder stages of the game, and you you feel it on loop too because, like, resetting actually is. Ooh, a lot of time. he didn't have a lot of lag there. That was really cool. Looks like Tadeo got rid of the shield as well. Nice. Pretty good. So Talia is getting a little stuck on the uh, Skull Tower. He has to retreat. Um, in loop two, the Skull Towers are notably faster. And yeah, in in uh, on loop two of normal difficulty, I don't know if you get Skull Towers that force you to retreat, but like in other difficulties, you definitely do. And I'd like to point out how extremely difficult this game is, and how much you have to actually adjust in the run like this is not all like set play like they have certain strats but a lot of it is like adapting to things in time and that's what these players are really really freaking good at um so i'd like to point out that these players are both on ridiculously good paces though um some minor mistakes happen to both of them but nothing really major so far like this game is known to set you back for minutes <laughs> and that hasn't happened yet so that is crazy. Everything is still in, you know. This race is nuts right now. Yeah, it's, it's unusual to see, like, two really good times at the same time like this. Yeah, it's also, it's, yeah. It's, typically, it's, uh, like, someone will get hit crazy. for a minute it's behind. Not, not very usual for the uh, SGNG. So they're both going to take a damage boost here again. Same procedure as before. And, um... They're going to be able to get the gold armor back 
at the end of the raft, right? And the raft right here is probably like one of the longest areas of the game. If you get killed by the boss, you can lose as much as four minutes. And that, that is just the way of auto scrollers. Um, how reset heavy are PB attempts? Uh, they're pretty reset heavy, but only because of stage one and the RNG to get the dagger real quick. Um, SGNG is actually a pretty good game to just uh, do no reset runs off once you get like the dagger in that case. Like from scratch, I'd say it's very reset heavy because um, it's pretty random to get the dagger in stage one. Like. There is a certain type of movement that you have to, like the weapons in the chest are on a global timer and there's a certain kind of movement that you have to do to always get the same RNG. Um, and it's like, I think well, it's... Well, uh, it, it, it's not RNG, it depends on what frame you open the chest on. Yeah, yeah, that's and what I mean, like uh, it's it's on a global timer, but like... Um, so it, it, it's, it's not RNG, you can manipulate it in stage one. Yeah. And we've also found you can manipulate it using the um, scythe magic, which we talked about last loop. Yeah, where that's a really good race strat, by the way. I used that on my first race here, too. If you use yeah. the uh, Scythe Magic, um, depending on what level you're on and like how close you are to the chest, and how close you are to the chest means how many hits the Scythe Magic will have to take to open it, you can get determine exactly what weapon you're going to get. Yeah. And on loop 2, and on or on level 2 and on level 3, you can one of those weapons is the dagger. Yeah. One of the main, um, one of the big things that players have to adjust to um, is the bracelet fight, which you're going to see at the end of uh, playthrough 2 and uh, 500, by the way. And that's also like um, one of the hardest parts in the game, if not the hardest part in the game at all, like completely. Um, Oh, okay. I thought Fred was going to jump into the core for a second. That can happen too, and then you mostly even get pushed into the sea. Yeah, um, if, if you hit that coral, you get pushed into the sea. Really scary, yeah. But you need to jump really far out to um, make sure you're going to spawn that chest. But yeah, you and, mentioned um, the bracelet fight at the end of the game. That's like the last level. Like, on your casual playthrough, you can expect to spend half your time trying to... Like, yeah, that's that's that. usually what I've been trying to collect from uh, from runs. Like, I I saw some people uh, do casual runs of this game or their first blind playthroughs, and usually <laughs> they take about four ish hours to get through the whole game basically, and then the last fight, which is a bracelet fight, also takes about another four hours. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of crazy to think about because it's just ridiculously hard. But like when we get to the get to it, you'll see how these these players do it. And this they is this is crazy. Lot, We're on the second playthrough, second stage, and they're this close together. Um, that's just blowing my mind right now. Oh yeah, they they they're both having really good run. They're about 15 seconds apart, um, and that's just crazy. And both have golden armor, so they can both go for the quick kill. Is Fred gonna get the nice catch? Ooh, nice catch. There you go. That's a really, really precise trick to hit. No, I'm just memeing. It's not it's really easy. You just hold up when you collect the key. Now this stage is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be scary. The, the start of the stage uh, is always really scary because we have this, these little flying demons around here. Oh, that was a slick shield loss. That was really sexy. Holy damn, that was really sexy. So you can let these fly, uh, demons fly into you, small ones, uh, in order to lose your shield. They sort of count as a projectile. And uh, this is going to, once again, reduce uh, lag on a lot of stages, so that's pretty cool. Um, these, these little demons, these little nightmares floating around all over the stage like like in the community we call them run killers oh we call uh, them run killers that's what i was first, about to say for a reason first, first all right blood. they are evil taylio got hit <laughs> so you what go. you're gonna see from uh, taylio is you're gonna see uh, roughly the same strat he used um last loot when he got hit by the armor he, he's gonna get his bronze armor back 
Another thing you could do is you could go for an intentional death after the checkpoint, which is slightly slower, but it's also somewhat easier and more reliable. Yeah. So you gotta pray to the gods that he's not gonna get hit at this arena now. You wanna shoot him once and then you dodge him. Oh wait, he's just run through, okay. Oh, okay, he's yeah, taking he's, the intentional he's, death. He's taking the death. So yeah, Which is that, smart, that's which is really smart. I respect that. It's what I would do. Yeah. So now now so. they're in a uh, bat country. So these bats, um, like, nine times out of ten, like, they're not a problem, but sometimes they come at awkward angles and, like, you have to adjust. This is one of the places where you have to improvise a lot. So... Little fun fact, today he's like gonna it. get the armor again, and he's also gonna get the golden armor again. And let's say if like Fred gets hit on one of these goblin towers and Teleo doesn't, then they might be close to be on par again, which is insane. So Fred's Go actually on the goblin waterfall now. This this is one of the harder parts of the game. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, he got through it. Nice. Dude, and Fred actually, is on one, fire today. One thing I don't know if we talked about last time was a quick kill on this boss, and Fred's gonna go ahead and do it here. It's really sweet. Yeah, this one is sweet. And when you set it up like that with the platform, it's not too difficult either. Yeah, uh, there's really another setup where you do faster, it, but it's really where hard. You closer to the key, and you don't have to walk to the key so far. Oh, it looks like Talio got hit again. So he's gonna have to do this waterfall without uh, armor, and having armor. Um, it increases your damage. So if you have armor, these go uh, goblins, they die in one hit. But if you don't have armor, or if you don't have upgrade weapon armor, they die in two hits. But he gets through it. Wow, dude. Ooh, nice adjustment. Nice adjustment. And and that's what I meant. Th those are these little adjustments you see. Um, because not everything in this game has a set spawn or anything like that. Um, so... Uh, you saw this uh, blue demon guy pop out of nowhere, and that could have potentially been a hit for Fred, but he just took a bit and then oh, instantly killed him instead. Go. Got the key. Like when he shoots up like that, like well, one thing is like if you usually stay put, the rocks don't hit you. However, it, it's always scary to move through those. So Fred is on a great pace, and he's through like most of the random stuff. Um, a, a few of the random things that can mess with him now are bad luck flower and the bracelet fight. But if he gets through those, he's he's gonna have a monster uh, time on this run. I don't know if he's quite on a PB pace. Fred's PB is very tight, so. Right. Um, like, I've, I've seen him do some safety threats that I don't know if um, if they would be included in PB of his, but he would have an amazing time if he kept this up. Yeah, this is still on a very good pace. Uh, he, he didn't make any really major mistakes. Like, uh, I think he took a hit once on stage 5, loop 1. But that was about it. <laughs> this is... Kinda crazy, and even like Talia also is on a really good pace still. Like, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> this game really is not this consistent, guys. Like, this is they're showing it off at its finest right now. Like, so this Fred has a mediocre di um, Hydra fight, and it's going into stage five. Yeah, fourth and fifth on the leaderboards, by the way, and they're apart by uh, 16 seconds. On the lead up boy. Uh, so. Ooh, oh, misses Fred, a Fred misses there. the jump. It's a bit of a time loss, also because you have to wait out that cycle to shoot again for the flower. And at the pace Fred is on, that like time loss like is amplified because he is. Um, he has the potential to get a sub 35 minute run, which is. All right, we're gonna see the dragon strat he is. Strat he everyone strives for it, and. Um, those small time losses might not threaten his lead, but it'll threaten the possibility of a sub-35. 
Yeah, 34 would be really sick. Like, really sick. The best in the West versus the best in the US. Oof. Hot take by QC in chat. The, the US is further West than Sweden is, isn't it? Isn't it? How does that make sense? Fred, Fred's in the East. <laughs> well, I, I suppose he's in the West, like, on a global scale, but compared to Telio, <laughs> Are we seriously having this discussion right now? <laughs> I honestly have no clue, dude. I have no clue. But yeah, like, like Fred's maintained gold armor path to... Uh, Half bad luck flower, so West is a all he has to do is execute one. Well Got this pretty, pretty in the head. <laughs> QC man, you crate. <laughs> oh, did QC, he? You crate. Did he jump through the um, shieldman, or what? No. Oh, it's never, fine. never mind. <laughs> it's all good. Just uh, chat. Chat is just freaking out right now. Like it's kind of weird. All right. Um. Moving on, I guess. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, like, so Fred, Fred is the best in, like, all of the West. And Helio, <laughs> even though he's also in the West, he is not the best in all of the West. But he is the best in the U.S., so... Oh, there, God, I, I, I suppose it makes sense. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rare footage of commentator actually not commentating right now. What's happening? All right, um, so we can see Talio... Jumping through the avalanches again. He's gonna spawn the golden chest, right? Uh, golden armor right here. Um, and uh, he's gonna be able to get the quick kill here. And Fred is on insane pace right now. He's doing really well right now. Yeah, Fred is definitely on a sub 35 pace. Ah, oh, dude, that is hot. That is really hot. Ooh, get sniped. Ah, uh, yep. Talio gets hit by the boss. Ooh. This, this boss, like, can give you some random pattern, and it's, it's one of the places where you have to react Rayon to Rayon says, don't jump at me like that, brother. What are you doing? I'm going to snipe you, and you're so going to die. There's the bracelet. So the bracelet takes some time to spawn, so what Fred did is he went ahead and killed the armor with magic Well, it spawned. Talio's going to damage boost up here. He's going to jump right under this... Uh, X genie. All right. And he's gonna skip right to the end of the level. And meanwhile, <laughs> Fred is making like is on a monstrous time. Again, I don't oh. think it's PB time for Fred. Fred PB is too good, but he is he is on. It, it would be PB PB time. A PB time for me, it would be a PB time for Talio, so he's probably going to beat Talio's PB if he doesn't screw up. Rare footage of uh, Aqua is actually actively trying to jinx uh, Fred's run in chat, that's pretty cool. So, uh, this is the bracelet fight, and it's horribly difficult, and there's a lot of ways to save a lot of time, and a lot of ways to lose a lot Ooh. of time here. Ooh, wow! Pretty nice. Oh, oh yeah, he, he didn't chase them all the way off the edge. So one thing you can do there is you can um, have Nebiroth damage boost you through him, and you can save a decent amount of time through that. That's However, it. No QC like special though. Even need it. Oh my god, he is on pace for a 34. If he gets a Nanko's RNG, this is gonna be easy game, dude. Um, not sure if a two psycho can still PB. To be honest. What? No. Guy, uh, like for Fred PB, no. But he can beat he can beat my PB, he can beat Telio's PB, so. Uh you're right, you're right. He has a Oh No! He, he misses the platform, he misses the two doing, cycle. <laughs> well at least there's a three cycle. Oh my god. And yeah, that's gonna be a sub thirty five. It is going to beat Telio's That is just PB. crazy, man. That is blowing my mind right now. <laughs> He's gonna beat this game faster than Telio has ever beaten it. That's that's styling on him right there. Oh god! <laughs> oh, Fred says, "Sit actually, down, Tilio." Actually, actually, hold on a second. That is, that is a thirty-four thirty 
Maybe Fred was on PB pace going into 30th. I forgot. This is Nico timing. Yeah. So he has a 34.46 on this. And his PB is a 34.34. Yeah. So, so we have two timing systems for the game. One where you press start. Where you start on press start and end on Princess Landing. And another where you start on control of Arthur and end on loss of control. They're about 16 seconds different. So, Fred just said um, in, IR in the IRC chat, okay, I think it was a PB. Oh, it was? Hold on a yeah. second. I'm going to have to check this. And now he's popping off too. He's like, oh, this wait. is why you don't warm up. What is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, Fred is popping off. That That is a PB. Yeah, like it's, his PB is a 34-34. So dude, yeah, I, dude, I was thinking it was a 34-20s. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that it, it is a PB. PB hype. PB hype, boys. Jesus Christ, man. These people. What is this? That's an amazing time. That is crazy right here. I would have never thought that a discussion about where the US and Sweden is would be on one of Fred's PBs. Ooh, Tilly who? Get hit there. Hoip. <laughs> Shouts to Jimmy, by the way. And Talios finishes with it. Still a very good time. Oh, he's going to go for the power slide. Doesn't get it. Going to lose some seconds to that. However, gets a sub 37 still. That's crazy. Time worth spent. Yeah, sub 37. Very good. That is also very crazy. Like that's a really, run. really good time. I can't believe this. Casual thirty fours, thirty sixes. Jesus Christ. I guess they do say the first run of the day is always the best, huh? Yeah, it could be. Classic Fred with the PB in a race. Slight salt from Tilio in chat. Loving it right now. Love to see that. No, but once again, both of these runners did very well. Good job, people. That was really nice. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you're going to, if we're going to have another run in this round of tournament where um, both players are under a 37. Ooh, looks like we're having Fred here. Ready to join. For an interview. Salt, salt, salt. PJ salt. <laughs> well done, both of you guys. That was really, really nice. That was a good run to watch. Yo, what's up, Fred? Yeah, dude, that was a pretty sick run, to be honest. <laughs> nice run. Yeah, that was pretty nice, great. you know. It was like a six-second PV or something, you know. Nothing yeah, that special. was some big gains. That was like, like a like four-second PV. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, yeah that's, that's like... a PB. Like, that's, that's pretty great. So, so Fred, <laughs> how much time do you lose um, by missing that cycle in 30th? Do you know? Uh, I'm not really sure. But I've, I've, so this is something I've done quite often. Uh, when you go into that fight with the gold armor and the shield, it just lags so much. So I'm just not used to the, like the difference yet. Okay. But yeah, that probably was a crazy like five seconds yeah. plus at least. Okay. Yeah, that was just insane to watch. Just letting you guys know. I don't know if any of you guys have been following the stream or not, but that was just nuts to watch because, like, both of you guys were on par for a long, long time up until, like, I think stage three, playthrough two. So, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really crazy. I think uh, a run killer killed Taleo's run. So. Yeah, the classic run killer. Yeah, I think yeah. my yeah. first like mistake was uh, I did an accidental neutral jump in the ice caves in the first loop and just hang hanged in the air in the icicle and got hit. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, looked like yeah, an I mean, accidental uh, double jump, like double neutral instead of forward, right? Something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was trying to shoot the icicle, but I was like, yeah, let's just jump into it instead. You know, make it a bit spicy. Nice. 
Yeah, but even yeah. even even then, you have like a thirty four thirty. That that's amazing. Yeah, thanks, man. It was really really good. This is why you don't warm up before races, by the way. <laughs> Just Red go and buy some ice cream in town. <laughs> no warm up, by the way. No space. Yeah, it was a good race. That was that was really really fun to watch. But uh, yeah, and and neither of you validated the race. <laughs> and and for those of and for those of you watching, validating the race. In our community, mean getting it on stage one. Yeah, it usually happens 100% guarantee each run. So, yeah, it's a very high uh, success rate of validating the run. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that was so really that, oh, to tell that you, was good race. to watch. That was nice. I, I wonder what time you would have gotten without the. Um, Sardius thing, and also there oh, was yeah. like some some small thing. On Nebiroth, jumped on the platform. Yeah, yeah, Nebiroth chased you off. Yeah, and and no QC special, which would have been the last oh. hit, by the way. Yeah, unfortunate. Um, But yeah, that was fun fun to watch, fun to commentate. Uh once again thanks Speed Gaming for having us. Uh this is a really good opportunity for us to show off this great game to some more people. Yeah. Uh, really high high class race here. And thanks like, for all of you guys in chat for making this race so hype. <laughs> it was really, <laughs> really fun. Um, let's make but, nice race, guys. <laughs> yes, nice. It's almost race, boys. Oh, you like like at the time you got that's the kind of time that you might be able to beat Malcolm maybe half the time with. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah. So keep doing maybe. that. You might be able to win the tournament. Yeah, I'll I'll try, man. <laughs> no promises, yes. though. Nice. I'll just need another PB, I guess. Yeah, no big loss, please. All One right. day we'll show sure. a big loss in speed gaming. <laughs> Streaming a big loss. Big Agreed. loss race, actually. All right, I think that's it for us. Um, and uh, thank you guys for watching this race. And um, well, I'm rolling out. Uh, so have fun, everyone. And um, until next time. Yeah. Until next time.